Hello and welcome to Euphoria, build a better dystopia in about three minutes. It is a game for two to six players. It has no solo mode. Playing time is around 60 minutes, but longer with more players. It is a moderately complex game. When you were growing up, you thought your world was a utopia. At least, that's what all the broadcasts kept telling you. Slowly it dawned on you that you were living in a nightmarish dystopia. Being one of the few aware people, you decided to take action. As a mid-level manager, you use your sway to convert your subordinates to your way of thinking. And it's time to build a power base. The way to win this game is to accumulate influence across the board, handily represented by stars, gaining authority over each faction, and by pushing your subordinates' faction agendas. The first player to place all their stars wins. Competitive. Players are rival managers operating behind the scenes. Dice. Dice in this game represent your workers. Worker placement. The board contains many areas where you place your workers and gain the associated benefits. Player turn. Euphoria is a paradox, a relatively simple game that is difficult to explain because all the systems are so interconnected. I will not cover all of them, but will focus on the high notes. You start the game with one open recruit and one hidden. Their allegiance will impact what factions you try to support during the game. Your turn itself is simple. You either reclaim any or all of your dice from the board, or place a dice on a location and gain the associated benefit. When you reclaim your dice, you roll them and add your intelligence score. If you ever roll a combined total of 16 or more, you lose the highest dice. If you decide to place dice as your action, you have many locations to choose from. Also, if you ever have two dice of the same number, you can place twice in a row. First of all, there are commodity regions. When you place a dice there, you gain the benefits for the total value of all dice there. The more dice in location changes the reward. You can gain extra workers by using either electricity or water. Tunnels allow you to gain resources or artifact cards and advance the tunnel market. Monuments require multiple dice and resources and can be built by more than one player. Any player who did not contribute to building the monument gets hit with a penalty. Monuments and artifact markers allow you to place stars for victory. Many locations also increase that faction's influence, which unlocks bonuses for players who have those factions recruits. There are a lot of locations in other small systems, but a general rule for the game is that you get commodities in order to get cards and resources, which you then convert into stars to win. Why would you like this game? The recruit system is neat and adds a lot of variety to the game, and having one open and one hidden recruit makes for some interesting decisions and interactions, especially at higher player counts. The take your dice or place a dice system is excellent. It keeps the game moving with great rapidity and keeps players engaged. And the production values are great. The whole game looks wonderful on the table. The single best thing about this game is the resource tracker cards. Uh, I don't know why every resource management game doesn't come with these, as they are a huge time saver. However, the game is not as thematic as I initially thought. When I saw the decision cards initially, I thought there would be a morality system built into this game, but they ended up being a very minor part of the game. It also works far better with four or more players than it does with two or three. As with lower player counts, there will be several factions you don't interact with. It is also a game that needs to be played at pace, and even one slow player can make the game drag far more than most. For another quick and fun worker placement game, I recommend Lords of Waterdeep. And for another worker placement game by the same designer, I recommend Viticulture Essential Edition.